today we're pleased to present an interview with Mary Countess of Bessborough. She's the great-granddaughter of Anthony J. Drexel, who founded the Drexel Institute of Art, Science, and Industry in 1891, what is today Drexel University. Anthony J. Drexel, born in 1826, was one of the foremost financiers, bankers, and philanthropists of 19th century America. Along with the university named after him, Anthony Drexel is known as the founder of what became Drexel Burnham Lambert. He earned the reputation as the man who made Wall Street for his financial acumen. And he was also the uncle of St. Catherine Drexel, the founder of Xavier University in New Orleans. Here we have a portrait of Anthony J. Drexel by Joseph Bergenthal. Our guest today is Anthony's great-granddaughter, Mary Countess of Bessborough. She's 95 years old and, as you'll see, a stylish and lively personality. Before we begin, I'd like to explain that this gallery, where we film our interviews, holds many of the Drexel family collection of portraits and paintings. And among the portraits are several of Mary's immediate ancestors. Here, for example, is a portrait of Francis Drexel Paul, the second child of Anthony Drexel and the grandmother of our guest. It was painted around 1890 by Charles E. Drake. Frances, who was known as Nanny, was a bridesmaid at the White House wedding of Nellie Grant, the daughter of President Grant, a close friend of Anthony Drexel. The burgundy velvet dress in the portrait is now part of Drexel University's historic costume collection. Frances married James W. Paul, Jr. in 1877. He was a partner in the family bank Drexel and Company. Also in this gallery is a portrait of Mary Astor Paul Munn Allais, our guest's mother, as well as a portrait of her older sister, Pauline Munn Doyle. Both portraits were painted in Paris by Philip Alexius de Laszlo. Mary's mother later divorced her father, Charles A. Munn, and married A. Jacques Allais in Paris in 1934, which is why Mary had her schooling in France. Mary's sister married Milton Dorland Doyle in 1931 and died young at the age of 30, only eight years after her marriage. The gallery also has a portrait of Mary's aunt, Ellen Drexel Paul Mills, by Philadelphia artist Adolf Boré, and dates from around 1910. This portrait wonderfully captures the elegance of the sitter in her satin dress and fur wrap. Finally, we have a striking portrait of Mary's cousin, Anthony J. Drexel Biddle, Jr. He was, as you see, a very fashionable young man, and research tells us that he was named the best-dressed man in America ever by Gentleman's Quarterly at around the time this painting was done, in 1922. He was also a diplomat and hero, serving as the U.S. ambassador to nine countries during World War II and led an exodus of 9,000 refugees out of Poland. The portrait here is by R. Hinton Perry. Mary's mother and aunt grew up at the famous Woodcrest estate, where Mary and her sister also spent their early years. Woodcrest is a Philadelphia landmark. The estate was commissioned by Mary's grandfather, James W. Paul Jr., from the well-known Philadelphia architect, Horace Trumbauer. The house is Elizabethan Tudor in its overall design, built of local Pennsylvania stone with limestone trim. It seems to have depended on a huge staff of servants, including a legion of gardeners and a half dozen coachmen. Now it's the site of Cabrini College. The picture gallery where we are holding our interview is on the third floor of Drexel's main building, built in 1891. It was historically restored in 2002 in order to house the Drexel collection. Hello and welcome to the Drexel interview. I'm your host, Paula Morantz Cohen, speaking to you from the Drexel University Picture Gallery. Today our guest is Mary Countess of Besborough a great-great-granddaughter of Anthony J. Drexel, the entrepreneur and philanthropist. Lady Bessborough was born in Radnor, Pennsylvania, on the famous Woodcrest estate. In 1948, she married Viscount Eric B. 
Gun Cannon. The Countess of Besborough is the founder of the Friends of Benjamin Franklin in London. Lady Besborough, welcome to the Drexel interview. You grew up in a very wealthy and well-connected Philadelphia family. Um, you're a descendant of Anthony J. Drexel, who was the founder of Drexel University, and he was a great benefactor throughout this region. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about growing up in that sort of family, a kind of American aristocracy, wouldn't you say? Yes, but that's rather difficult, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, did you feel that you were very special growing up? No. Um, no. No, no, not, not particularly special. No, I uh, was born in the, uh, Radnor, PA, in the, in the, in the Rimmer Hospital, and, and then we were lived at uh, Woodcrest. My grandpa, Paul, J J James W. Paul, built Woodcrest. The famous Woodcrest and estate. Which, which, uh, uh, which the Dorrance fa family sold to the Cabrini College. So it's now Cabrini College. Exactly, and the administration's done in the mansion, as they call it, uh, Woodcrest. So you were, and, did you spend then, your early uh, life at Woodcrest? Yeah, up to six years old. Oh. That's all. Do you and remember we went to anything? Europe, and then my mother sold Woodcrest to the Dorrance family. Okay. Uh, to, to the Dorrance family, and uh, they then sold it to Cabrini College. Okay, so do you have any memories of, of Woodcrest? Oh, yes, I, ha I have some memories. What are the they, memories? Well, I mean, all sort of, all sort of funny things. Uh, I remember uh, uh, choking over a caramel, and my and nanny picked me up by my feet and shook me. I, I don't think I'd be here to talk to you today. <laughs> she, she saved my life, and I was choking to death. <laughs> That's what I can remember in Woodcrest. Uh, as a sort of, uh, um, a terrace, a clothed-in terrace uh, dining room. Do you remember a lot of space to play? Uh, we, 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 we had nursery mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and all that. And uh, I have a, a, a very pretty uh, a, well, a drawing of Woodcrest, uh, which was sent to me the other day by the Cabrini uh, College, because we went to a, uh, I was invited to a, 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 um, an unveiling of a plaque at their front door uh, because Woodcrest has become um, a member of the uh, um, um, Historic Society, I think. Uh, well, it, it's a very famous structure of the Woodcrest uh, building. Was The architect was Horace Trumbauer, a very famous architect. Yeah, I know, it's not, but it's not my favorite type of architecture. Really? But I know, but there it is. I'm very fond of it because I remember this was the first house I could remember when I was little, you see. Because of the family connection. Yes, yes. Well, you then said you, you grew up in Paris. Is that and then right? We went to, then we went to Paris. And so did you spend your young girlhood in Paris? We went, went to, to, uh, to a, a, a school in, in, called, uh, out, a, 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 a cour outside near Saint Cloud, a race course, I remember. And uh, I can't remember its name now. And then after that, I went to the Institute, uh, Institute of uh, Madeleine. Uh, later on, and then, uh, then I ended up in school in England. Okay, before we get to England, why Paris? Why did your family move to Paris? My mother moved there, mm. and, and my father, and then they divorced in 28, and when, when that portrait was being painted. And that portrait is of your... that portrait of, of mummy... Your, of your mother. ...and my sister were painted in 1928, and that was when my... And the parents divorced in Paris. And how old were you in 1928? Oh, I don't know. You have to work that one out. <laughs> well, I will say that you're going to turn 95 this March in yes. 2010. Yes. So we'll have to work that out. Yes, you have to work that out. I haven't worked that mathematics out. Now, so that is your mother, that's your sister, and over there you have your my aunt. My grandmother. And your grandmother. Oh, my aunt. Yes, Aunt Lala. This yeah. is... Uh, Mills, Mrs. Uh, James Mills, Mrs. P P no, Mrs. James Mills. And, that, and then that very jaunty fellow there is your cousin, 
you say his name, Anthony, Tony, uh, uh, yes. Fiddle. Uh, yes, he was a cousin of Mummy's, really. Okay. And then we had, being young, we, were, we, had, we called him Cousin Tony. Now, so after Paris, and I take it then you were trained like a, a proper uh, French girl in, in, uh, in Paris? No, I, I, I was brought up uh, like an American girl in an American house family. But you went to Paris. French schools? Yeah, and, uh, uh, well, I, no, it was, yes, it was French. <laughs> yes, it was French. And then you went to England? And then, and then after that, I was sent to England to school. To, to Westfield, which is the junior school of Heathfield. And Heathfield was near Ascot. Very, Ascot exclusive, very exclusive school then. Oh, very, very yeah. exclusive school. And it was in and your in uniform and everything. England that you met your husband? Uh, no, I met my, my husband uh, in Paris. Hmm. Uh, 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 he uh, was a very distinguished family, I have to admit. Uh, he, he was the 10th uh, Earl of Besborough. Okay, that I way. notice you have an English accent. Well, I guess I went to school in England. You went to school. Is it true accent? that one of the reasons your mother moved abroad was to make sure that you got an English accent? No, not at all. My aunt Lala, over there. Okay. She was terribly against Philadelphia accents. Oh. She didn't want people. She didn't want me to talk like that through my nose. You know, she wanted me to talk through my voice. It's not she, but she and my mother, they were very anti Philadelphia accents and uh, women particularly. <laughs> they thought it was unattractive. Uh, oh, very unattractive. But you have a very nice one. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think yeah. it's a very New Jersey yes, accent. Yes, because you got it here. Yeah. You got it down here. You haven't got it up here. Mm -hmm. but it's a lot so of you don't like a Philadelphia accent either? Well, I mean, I, I was uh, sort of educated not to, you know, just to speak English. That's why I went to school in England. And I had diction lessons in England. Because I really? must have been very American. Now, did you, have, did you have a coming out? Was there a kind of a, uh, uh, were you a debutante? Or did you come out into society when you were a young uh, lady? Yes. I, I, we had a coming out party. And my sister and I did it here. And that was great fun. And I, my mother pushed me backwards uh, in age. Uh, so I said, you come out at 16, you see. And so, so she pushed my sister, two years younger than me, forward, and we had it jointly at the Belgrave Stratford okay, uh, okay. Hotel. That was it. That's okay. where we had it. Now, uh, during World War II, you were in England. Is that right? During the Second World War. Now, the Second World War, uh, yes, I was in, I was in, yes, in the whole time. And you were working for the Red Cross? Uh, uh, and uh, now, wait a minute. No, I was in America all the time. I was in, I was, I was, I was in the, um, uh, and I was in the Red, American Red Cross here. And uh, I did my, uh, uh, did my, wait, I, I did my Red Cross uh, training in, 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 Fl in Palm Beach, Florida. So after the, when were you married? You were married after the war. Uh, we were, uh, what year were we married? In, in, uh, we were married in, uh, in Paris, and we met in Paris, and, and um, when he was the British Embassy, and uh, first secretary, and then uh, we, met, we married in pa I married in Paris at the American Cathedral. Oh, uh, in Paris, and uh, then uh, uh, the, we, we went to Rome for our honeymoon, and uh, uh, and then we came back. And then my pa was so generous because he then by that time he'd moved back to Florida, to, to Palm Beach, to the house there, and uh, uh, he that winter he lent his um, apartment, uh, which was called flat, uh, to, to us. You see, to, to Eric Besborough and me. He, now he was Eric Besborough, my husband was, and it was Frederick Nerfleet um, Punsby. Um, um, Tenth Earl of Besborough. And then, also, he became Viscount when his father was alive. 